it's a husband-wife thing. And maybe you could agree with that. Yeah. All right, so it's just not me. Thank you. A weak stomach. Or we could be mentally or intellectually deficient. Not able to withstand temptation or persuasion. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Many of you start out this year saying, Oh, I'm going to overcome those donuts. Oh, I'm going to overcome those Twinkies. Oh, I'm going to overcome these different things that have been vices in your physical body. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, I'm with you too. <laughs> we shall overcome. <laughs> Not able to function properly, having weak eyes, lacking skill or proficiency, uh, tutoring the weaker, for the weaker students. Many people have these, these areas or they're deficient, in, they're weak in some of these areas that I'm mentioning. Also lacking normal intensity, intensity or potential, potency. You know, the Greek translation for the word weak is asthen. Weak means something that is weak, base, feeble, puny, or powerless. Describing something that is almost laughable. Now, have you ever been laughed at? You ever start out with, you know, with a few people and you're like laughing, you guys are making fun, having fun, and all of a sudden you find out they're not laughing with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's laughing, they're laughing at you now. It's turned on you. You become the joke. See, the Corinthian church was the laughing stock of the city and the Roman Empire. The governmental authorities considered Christians to be a weak and powerless people. They were the laughable. Yet this group of Christians turned the world upside down in their day and evangelized the known world of the Roman Empire at that time. Come on. These so-called nobodies, these so-called weak things, these so-called low-level people, these so-called not knowing anything th people, these so-called not thinking people, these so-called powerless or puny or laughable people ended up evangelizing the known world of the Roman Empire at that time. Wow. Kind of reminds me of us. When they used to call us the attic church. And I used to go to school a little bit embarrassed to be dropped off by rehab people. <laughs> a beat up old man. Then they would shout things at me on purpose to embarrass me more. In Spanish. They say, hey, Sonny, do you know that guy? And I go, no, I don't, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> Because I, I was looking at them the same way that many people were looking at them. Didn't think that these people would become much. Oh, but God sure turned my mind to the ground. Because I grew up in this ministry. I saw these treasures that came into our home. I seen them rehabilitated. I seen them get full of the Holy Ghost. I seen them get the calling of God. I seen them begin to answer the call and go into cities and take cities for Jesus Christ. I began to see the so-called laughable, the so-called ridiculous, the so-called people that were once addicts and always going to be an addict. No, but God put His Spirit in See, when we are weak and empty, it gives us the opportunity to be filled with God's strength and power. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. It's not about physical might. It's about the joy of the Lord. It's about the Spirit of God. He is the source of our strength. He is the source of our power. He is the source of the anointing. He is the source of our joy. He is the source of our peace. He is the source of our effectiveness. When you get God on the inside, Oh, he makes things straight on the outside. Come on. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 10. Reads it in the message translation. Because of the extravagance of those revelations, you can look at the screen if you want. And so I wouldn't get a big head. All right. I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me down. But what he in fact did was push me to my knees. No danger than of walking around high and mighty. At first I didn't think of it as a gift and I begged God to remove it. Three times I did that and then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. 
My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap. Listen closely. And began appreciating the gift. Come on. It was the case, a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. Yeah. Now I take my limitations in stride and with good cheer. <coughs> These limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, accidents, oppositions, bad breaks. Hello, somebody. I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. <laughs> the Bible in our type of translation when you're weak he's strong Come on. see David was one of those so called weak guys when he was first starting on the shepherd's fields David was one who may have seemed outwardly weak but God chose him to be a great king kind of reminds me of some of our God's anointed now generation young people I yeah. wish they don't look like they're going to amount to much until they begin to get a revelation that God is able to raise them up now to be used for his glory and honor. When I first started out with the youth ministry, I would look at these kids and I would look at them with the wrong perception many times. I thought of it as, oh man, I'm here to get them just to get out of the streets or just to get them saved to barely make it. And when they get older, they'll be answering the call of God. That was the first look I had at them. But then one day God began to change my thinking. He began to change my perception. And he began to show me under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that today is the day for them to get saved. Today is the day for them to get involved. Today is the day for them to be used. That they're not the next or the ex or the future, but they're also the now generation. Come on now. And that God wanted to place his anointing upon them now. David is one of these types. God looks at the heart. And David was a ruddy shepherd boy Overlooked by his family, overlooked by his community, overlooked by his contemporaries of his time. But God saw the heart. Hear me now. God saw the heart. David, David's anointing in 1 Samuel 16, verse 6, it says, So it was when they came and they looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Samuel looked at him and said that. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him for the Lord does not see as man sees a man looks at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart the Lord did not look for his physical stature or a perfect life or even the ability to perform or speak he looked at the inner part of the person and he looked at the heart thank God that he looks at the heart because many of us don't have the expertise in certain fields many of us don't know a lot Many of us have not graduated from major colleges or major universities. Many of us don't come from a lot of, uh, you know, people that are really, really well known or well respected. We don't come from those type of families. Many of us come from broken homes. Situations that were hard. But God says, I'm looking for the heart. See, the heart that will look to him. The heart that will love him. Let me ask you, as I'm saying this, think about yourself. Do, do I have a heart that loves Him? Do I have a heart of worship for Him? The heart to worship Him. The heart that trusts Him. That believes what He says. That worships Him, not with just lips, but also with His life. I believe.